Hi, and welcome to another edition of North Shore Journal. I'm your host, Walt Kosmowski, and I have three very special guests with me today. I have Paul Treffery. Paul, wave your hand. There you go. I have Brenda Murphy and Morgan Dyer. And these folks are with the Beverly Cultural Council. And um, I know a lot of people in the community, and maybe a lot of you viewers, are not familiar with the Beverly uh, Cultural Council. So we're going to give you uh, some of the basics and some of the background, talk about their mission and what they do. Uh, so uh, maybe I'll, I'll open with a, with a very basic question, and a, any one of you can take this. But what, what exactly is the Beverly Community Council, and what is your mission? What, what do you guys do? Well, Walt, the Beverly Cultural Council is one of the city's 40 boards and commissions. And it was established 30 years ago when the state created the Massachusetts Cultural Council. And the state uses that council on the statewide level to distribute probably about $16 million, according to this year, of funds that are targeted towards each community um, to support arts, um, humanities and interpretive sciences, which is classroom education, all in the area of the arts. So the Beverly Cultural Council gets together a couple times a year, and the state tells us how much money we're going to get from them annually. And our job is to open it up to the public to submit grant requests for cultural projects. And what we do on the council is we listen um, and evaluate um, each applicant. And at the end of the year, we uh, vote and we give out um, grant awards. Um, typically the state gives us between 15 and $18,000. Um, and that's based upon our population within the state. And in Beverly, um, we give an average of about, uh, average grant is Seven hundred to a thousand dollars, depend upon what kind of project somebody has come up with. It could be a school performance, it could be public art, um, but we get about like I said, about forty requests every year, and I think last year we gave out about twenty one or twenty two awards. Um, so that's in a nutshell what the Culture Council does annually in Beverly. Okay, well, that, that, that's, that's a very good synopsis, Paul. Thank you for that. Now, you say that the state gives out about $16 million a year. Now, has that, has that money been rather flat the last few years? Has it been going up? Has it been going down because of budget constraints? Actually, I couldn't tell you. On, I've only been on the um, council um, for, this is my third year. So I haven't tracked it, and there, there, I don't know of a database. But I, I think over the last couple of years, it's... Um, it's pretty much stayed um, the same. I do know that yesterday the, the governor came out and announced that they're going to continue to give the $16 million that was budgeted prior to the COVID um, epidemic hitting. So uh, to me, that's a commitment on the state and the governor's part to fund the arts across the state during this difficult time. So with about, what, 351 cities and towns in Massachusetts, so your share of that prorated based upon population, you say is about $18,000. That's about what you've been giving out? Correct. Yeah, yeah that's about it. And, uh, now, um, talk a little bit more about the, the kind of people that, uh, that apply for these, for these grants. Somebody else maybe want to take that? Or uh, who, who are the people that apply? And what, what kind of awards have you given out? Kind of give us an idea in the last few years. Yeah, I guess I can talk about that a little bit. Um, we have a, a few different um, kind of groups of people that we try to prioritize as much as possible. Um, we like to prioritize the schools, the elementary schools, the senior citizens, emerging artists, um, if I'm missing anything, uh, music and performative arts. And, and what we try to do is uh, you know, um, distribute the money into what the community needs. And what we do beforehand is we, before the grant process gets started, is we like to send out a survey um, for the Beverly community to let us know 
what they think that we need to be um, giving to this community, um, you know, and how do we serve the community in that way. So um, some of our, I guess I can talk about a couple of the, the um, grants that we've really loved over the years. Um, and uh, if that's okay, if I can talk sure. about a couple. Please do, please do. Yeah, so um, one of the grants that we have loved um, working with um, is, is a project called The Musery. Um, and we've given them money now, I think, I think for the last three years. Mm -hmm. um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think um, people can come back and apply three, three times and then they have to take a break for right. about what, how many years? Um, just yeah. one year. They can they okay. apply for a specific project three years in a row. Uh, for yeah. example, the musery can come in and uh, and apply for a grant for music, their yes. um, the reading music, mm -hmm. and then maybe on the fourth year they might apply for it for an instrument. Yes. So okay. the organization can reapply every year if they want, but a specific project can only go for three years in a row. Right. Okay. Yeah. So the musery for three years in a row had um, approached us with their project of an instrument lending program. Um, so essentially what that was, was a borrowing program that um, uh, for mostly elementary age students that get to um, get instruments for free. Um, this instruments like saxophone and trumpet and trombone and flute. And what we love about it is that it's like a public charity and it works to motivate and cultivate um, and inspire people to get involved with music. And it's free to, to these students who might not be able to afford um, an instrument for the band and their practice. So, um, you know, it's organized exclusively to promote music in the performing arts and it's when they've lent over 15,000 instruments over the course of the time that they've been working um, and they've saved people over $500,000, which is just incredible. Um, so we love to see that, um, how they've really integrated, um, you know, just kind of the well-being of the, of the community and young, young, young people to get to learn new instruments and it's not exactly just for elementary school students so say if I wanted to just learn a new instrument I could go in and and get an instrument from them for free um, which is really great. Um, another uh, project that we really loved um, was a project called the People of Beverly podcast and this was a, a really great um, a project from a woman named Lucia Gaviria. Um, I hope I said that correctly. Well, but, um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so basically, we gave her money to begin and start a podcast, um, uh, really engaging with Beverly residents and representing people from different backgrounds, gender, race, religion, and age. And she was doing 15 to 20 stories. Um, and she's really targeting Beverly residents who are interested in listening to or connecting with their neighbors. Um, and what we love about that is it really just like provided a stronger sense of community um, in, the, in the present and a window to the past in the future of the generations like throughout Beverly in general. So it really, um, you know, was interesting to hear all the stories that she ended up doing and it gave it gave access to everybody in Beverly. So what we're looking for really is how um, how the Beverly community is actually engaging with these projects and how many people can actually engage and um, with this podcast it really was a, anybody that got has a computer has a device um, so we really liked that and um, so the things that we gave her money for realistically just to give a sense of like you know how we how we evaluate you know who we're giving money to is she needed some equipment to start this podcast so microphones and headphones and interview stipends things like that um and what we generally like to do when we're when we're looking at who we're going to give money to um 
we basically want to see some, uh, you know, originality and um, creativity. And we also want to see how it's going to really serve the community. Um, and so I'll just do one more. Uh, I'll, I'll just give one more, um, which I really liked this one, but this is from, um, we really do work with the elementary schools. A lot of the, the schools like Cove School, Hannah Elementary School, um, Centerville School, they um, oftentimes come to us with many different little programs for their students. And one of the one of my favorites um, was uh, the Cove Elementary School did a residency program um, called the Poetry Cafe. And this was for really for fourth grade students, but they opened up one um, event for everybody to come to. But what they did was they, they had a, um, a residency program for a poet from Vermont, um, a poet, Andrew Green, who came into the school and offered various um, workshops for these students over nine sessions. So they paid him to come in and stay at the school and it gave students the opportunity to read various works of poetry, create their own poetry, and, you know, they got to experience how different authors really express themselves, convey their personal experiences and emotions and ideas, um, and really encourage the students to really utilize those tools of language. Um, so that was really special. Um, it, that was really targeted towards the youth, which was really sweet and engaging in the community in a bigger way as well. So those are just a few I'm wondering, uh, you also mentioned that the senior citizens is one of the, the areas or so the pockets of, of, of the population that you work with. Do, do, does the Council on Aging uh, 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 apply for, for grants? Have you worked with the Council on Aging in Beverly? Yeah, we have. And um, again, I've only been on the Council for three years as well. Um, so I don't have... Um, much of a memory of how we've worked with them specifically, but if Brenda, if you remember some of the things that we've done with them. In we the haven't past. worked with them specifically, but we've worked with many other groups who have projects that cited them as their place. Yes. So it, we've, we've had many of those things, a lot of performances and workshops. And if I can jump in, Walt, as far yeah. as what I recall, um, we funded a couple of, of one or two person performances, um, they, they go there and they put on a one or two person play for mm -hmm. the seniors. Um, yeah. We had a gentleman, I think, who was doing exercise um, with senior citizens sitting in chairs, but rocking out to, to good music. Uh, and these are like one or two day events. Um, but I know we've, we've done several things with them over the years. Mm -hmm. Are you, you mentioned before, that you do a yearly uh, survey to kind of gauge uh, what's going on in the community or, or where you might, for, tell us a little bit about that survey. Who, who participates? Who do you send that survey uh, out to? Okay. That survey has to go out every three years. And this year was our third year. And we send it out to as many people as we can. This year we were able to um, send it out to the email lists through City Hall, through Beverly Main Streets. We share, the cultural council shares it with all their network and we've been asking everybody to pass it along. In the past, we've been able to have an actual physical survey. We'd have a booth or a table at things like Arts Fest, um, homecoming events. So all various events throughout the city, but unfortunately this year we weren't able to have a physical presence. Right. So we had to do everything online. So we did a lot of things through social medias and e-blast. And yeah. we, had, we got 233 responses this year. Yeah. I think I think I was, I think because of, uh, of my relationship with you, Brenda, I think you guys sent me a survey. I think I answered that, that survey, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yep. Uh, yep. Now, uh, the, the money that you get, you say you are, you're uh, a um, Beverly City group, like the Harbor Management uh, uh, Authority, it's sort of. Now, does the money you get from the state, does the city uh, kick in some money or does that go to the city to you or do you get it directly from the state? It, the the state's money goes directly to the treasurer's office in City Hall. 
right. they actually manage and hold on to the funds. And once we go through our grant application process, All right, we tell you. the city who the awardees are. And then when the, um, when the event occurs, the performer or the artist, whomever, um, puts in a, a, a reimbursement form and they send it to us. We give it to the city. The city cuts the check and sends it to the performer right. slash artist. Okay. okay. So they're the holding now, agency. Yeah. Now, how many, how many awards might you give out in a, in a normal year? Last year, we gave out 21. Um, I'd say anywhere from around 20 is probably about the average. Okay. So if I do my math quickly, if you, if you have roughly 20 grand and 20 applicants, so the average award is about $1,000? Yes, More. I'd, I'd say maybe even a little less than that for the average. Yeah. yeah. And, and do, people, do people tell you how much money they want for a project or, or do you then decide how much you're going to give them? They have a specific ask that's part of the application, asking them how much they want. Um, okay. We also, one of the questions is, where else do they, do they have money from? And right. if we don't give them the money, can their project still happen? Um, and then when we read through the applications based on the criteria that we have outlined from us, from the Mass Cultural Council, then we grade it. And then we decide, do we give them the 100% that they asked for or do we give them a percentage of it? So if somebody, so, so there's clues in the application or that if somebody has a project where they've got a, it will cost them $25,000 they know that they're not going to get that entire 25 from you, right? Correct. Because Correct. you just don't have the budget to, to finance something like that. Right. Now, now, so I understand that right now, uh, your, your application timeline just started here in early October, and it goes to sometime in November. Can someone, yeah, somebody talk about that? Sure. It's, it's open online. If you want to put a grant um, request in, you have to go to the MCC's webpage and you um, fill out the application online. And it's about eight to 10 pages. Um, each page has like five or six questions on it. So it's not that difficult, but it, it um, requires you to explain you know, the full scope of your project, how much money it's gonna cost to, to put the project on, and like Brenda said, well, if you don't get the money from us, what are the other options you're looking into? So you got to give some uh, some uh, accounting of a budget to make sure that the project really is is capable of happening. But it's open right now from October 1st, and it closes on November 16th. And uh, we can share with you the the link um, at the Massachusetts Culture Council. Dot org, I believe it is, but we'll give you the link and you can share it if you can. Yeah, we'll, we'll put, it'll appear when, when we edit this program, it'll appear right as you're speaking, that, that link will, will appear. Okay. Sure. Um, and um, now you're having, uh, you're also conducting some uh, workshops um, in, in regards to people that might want to apply. Tell us about that. Well, this year we're kind of tackling it, trying to tackle it a little bit differently. We're trying to really engage with more people, trying to let them know who we are. And um, every single year, the second meeting that we host is an open, it's an open meeting. Um, and this year it's going to be on October 21st at 7 p.m. It's going to be a Zoom open call. And this year we're providing just a, I think it's a half an hour segment, maybe 15 minute segment um, on an information session on, on our grant specifically and pro tips from a couple of the members from our, our council who have really great experience with writing grants in the past. So they're going to be giving out some tips to kind of engage with, uh, with us better and, and how, we, how they will be able to give us the best information for eval evaluating their grants and their projects. So they'll get grant writing tips uh, and then- Grant writing tips, yeah. <laughs> and now when, it, when is this happening, Morgan? Uh, can you tell us- that and yep, so on, yeah, sorry. Um, so October 21st uh, at 7 p.m., what they can do is email our, our email, uh, which is Beverly Cultural Council 
at gmail.com. And they will just have say that they want to access the meeting. And then um, I think the day of, um, Brenda, maybe you know this, but oh, the day the of, the night night. Mm -hmm. probably the night before, late okay. afternoon or early evening. Okay. Yep. And we'll send out the, the link for them to, um, to get into the meeting and then they can ask questions and we'll provide some time at the end for questions um, and, and answers. So that's Beverly Cultural Council. Uh, at gmail.com. At gmail.com. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, now yeah. who, who should, who should apply? Who, who are the people? Now you get, you, you say that there are some people that have applied, um, uh, regularly or have applied uh, for, for successive years, but who, who do you encourage uh, to, uh, to apply for a grant? Well, emerging artists, schools, seniors, people who have projects that can benefit seniors and youth. Um, most importantly is people with creative projects that can benefit the community. The more people that the they can benefit from their project the higher the points are when we read through it. We want to see creativity. We want to see innovation. Um, this year, more important than anything else, planning is very critical. We want to see these people succeed. We want to give grants to people who will succeed in their projects. Yeah. yeah. So we give want... us an example of, of a project that you would say that would engage the community. Uh, give us an example of something like that that would get a lot of points for that particular aspect of their application? Well, one example is um, the city right now is in the process of installing poetry in some of the sidewalks downtown. And um, Beverly Main Streets came before us and they asked for some assistance in um, funding, putting this poetry into the sidewalks. So that's something that hopefully will be you know, visible for many years, and you're going to have hundreds, if not thousands of people walking on those sidewalks, enjoying the poetry that is in those, um, you know, sidewalks. Um, or even we've, we've assisted in um, sponsoring um, emerging artists at uh, the Beverly uh, Arts Fest. You know, it, it, I think every artist has to pay 100 or $200 in past years to get into Arts Fest, and some young emerging artists can't uh, afford that. So we will offer up a certain amount of money to pay for them. Hopefully, they'll get the exposure. Um, and another example, um, unfortunately, it didn't happen this year, but uh, Montserrat College of Art, um, this is their 50th anniversary. They had big plans on having a week-long celebration downtown. Um, it was going to be a, a 40 different events. Um, they came before us and we were very enthusiastic because it was going to be the you know, entire city downtown where their campus is. Um, unfortunately, with COVID, most of that has been now pushed to next year. Um, and the, the state's been very lenient and uh, um, accommodating to performers um, and projects that have been delayed or canceled. And if they're going to be pushed to next year, the, the, the funds or the, uh, the grant money is still available to them. But that's the kind of, we're looking for projects that are gonna, gonna um, benefit the largest number of people. Um, we like that large scale, but we also like the smaller stuff. As another example, I, if I'm correct, and what I loved was um, the North Shore Recovery High School came to us last year and they wanted some, a, a, a minimal amount of money to purchase books for poetry so they could add that to their curriculum. So we gave them um, the grant money for that. So mm -hmm. now you, you mentioned uh, uh, COVID, uh, Paul, and you know everything that's going on now with social distancing and people not gathering in groups. So how, how tell us a little bit more about how that's affected your process. And you mentioned that some of these projects have been delayed uh, because of the fact that they can't get together and they, they can't get out and do what they need to do to fulfill the terms of the, of, of the project. Tell us a little bit more about that. Well, we're, we're very curious to see who will come to us and put grants in this year since we're in the middle of the pandemic. Um, a lot of the performances that happened at the library, um, the, the senior center, and even in the schools 
those public forums are probably not going to happen um, next year. Um, and some of them might be online. Um, so it might change some of the, I guess, the costs associated. So we really don't know what it's going to look like. We're, we're interested to see, you know, are people going to take a year off and wait it out? Or are there projects that are, people are thinking about that are, are you know, COVID friendly um, that may not happen in a performance venue per se, but might be done some other way? Or we might see more public art um, projects and we, we would love to see more of that throughout the city. But so we're, we're kind of, this is our first time through the pandemic. So we're curious to see what the impact's going to be. Yeah. Now, I, I must tell you that uh, we had a conversation the other day with a group called Cantimus or Cantimus. I, I mm -hmm. hope I'm pronouncing yeah. that correctly. And I know that you have awarded them uh, some, uh, uh, and I never knew about that group. And they apparently are a choral group of about 40 people who perform, you know, uh, uh, arias from Aida to the Kyrie Eleison from a Mozart Mass or something like that. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna do some things with them uh, on on Bevcamp. Now uh, uh, tell us uh, now you the, the three of you are on the Beverly uh, uh, Cultural Council. How many members does the Cultural Council have right now? We have ten. We currently have ten. Um, <laughs> we've had as low as seven. And uh, what's the maximum we can have? Is it? 13? Uh, the, the, 13. City, the city uh, mandate allows for 11. So we, uh, okay. we want to fill them all up as much as possible. Okay. And so then you would submit an application to the mayor's office to the, and, uh, and then they, the mayor would, would, would appoint people. Is that how it works? Like that's how most commissions in the city work, right? Right. Um, in the past, um, I think a, a lot of the, the existing members, if they know that there's going to be an opening, they assist the mayor in finding, you know, I guess like-minded individuals that are are interested in um, promoting arts and culture, humanities, and interpretive sciences in the city. So um, sometimes the the mayor's office will come up with names, and sometimes the council will come up with suggestions. Um, so we work in collaboration with the mayor's office. Ultimately, the mayor has to sign off on whoever application get or interest is, uh, comes forward, and then the city council has to vote on it. So we only have a couple minutes left, folks. So is there anything that you would want to say, anything we haven't talked about that you think that it would be interesting for our viewers to know? Anything else? So uh, the, the, the time frame of uh, the applications is now till November? November 16th. Yes. And the and the email address to get more information or to do it is um, again Beverly Cultural Council at gmail.com. Okay. Um, and if somebody wants to uh, participate or become a member, they can contact you or they can also contact that same email address, I take it, correct? Yep. They can contact us at that same email address with any questions. If they're interested in becoming part of the council, um, they can contact us there. What will be required is a resume and a letter of intent. Okay, very good, very good. Well, uh, our, time is, our time is about up, so I would like to uh, thank my guests today. Uh, I have uh, Brenda Murphy and Morgan Dyer and Paul Treffrey on the Beverly Cultural Council. Thank you all, folks. Thank you, Walt. Thank you, Walt. So and I would like to uh, remind our viewers that you have been watching North Shore Journal. I'm your host, Walt Kosmowski, and we'll see you next time.